Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making them happen. And today we're having another look and hopefully a proper review on the Anycubic Mega X printer. As you may have seen last week, I had to swap out the motherboard for a new one because during my last review, the board started smoking, all hell broke loose. And in fact, I'll try and show you the video right now. Oh man, that stinks. Did you see that? What the fuck? Okay, so maybe it wasn't quite that bad, but it definitely had a little bit of smoke and uh, it, it annoyed me for the rest of the day. And then today I realized that I'd actually boxed the printer into the framework that I installed last week and I couldn't physically get the printer out, so had to take it apart to put it on my bench. Oh, what a day. Then this it happens with has several issues. Oh, why is my face doing that? Hey, I've got a box on my face. I don't know what's going on anymore. Anyway, why is it doing that? Oh, that's weird. Okay, I don't know how long that's been doing it for. Anyway, we we'll move swiftly on. Oh, why is it doing that? There's a box on my face. I don't know why there's a box on my face. I'm gonna have to sort that out. Let's move on, shall we? So what we're gonna be talking about today is this particular printer, of course. Some YouTubers have called this a beast. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a beast. It's a good printer but it's certainly not a beast. If you wanna know what a real beast is, check out my video on the Ratrig V-Core. That certainly is a beast. Uh, the print size is enormous, it's fantastic, so make sure you check that video out. Anyway, moving back to this. This is a relatively good printer. I've had some good prints out of it over the last couple of days, and straight away since I've been using it, it's performed pretty well. There is one major, major issue across all the other stuff. The user interface is a bit iffy, things like that. But the major issue is one that they've used very cheap stepper drivers, unfortunately, on the motherboard, which means that these motors are going to be noisy. And the problem with that is because of this metal frame, it actually amplifies the noise. Let me show you what I mean now. So as you guys can see, when I'm not talking, which is unfortunately pretty much all of the time, it does go round down to around about 60 decibels. Now. That's obviously the room noise that I'm in at the moment. I've got several 3D printers whirring away in the background. So if you just look at this very quickly. 59. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is turn the 3D printer on. You'll see this move up a little bit. There's gonna be some things like fan noise and the, uh, the sound of the motherboard when that boots up. So let's just have a quick listen to that. So that's pretty good. I mean, it didn't make too much of a difference on that particular part. So the next thing I'm gonna do is run some quick tests just to see what the axis are doing. And in this test, you'll see that the Z axis is certainly the uh, main culprit, which is the two stepper motors that make the uh, printer head move up and down. I found that the Y axis and the X axis on this really didn't make too much of a difference, certainly with one or two decibels, but the Z shot up at some points between 10 and 15 decibels. So what am I gonna do about all this noise? Well, I'm sure you've already noticed that on the uh, title of this video, it probably tells you that I'm gonna be silencing this printer as well. So I went on Amazon and I clicked on this particular link. And then I also then looked up how to do this particular mod because I kind of figured and generally with 3D printers, you have to modify the firmware to get the stepper motors to work properly. However, I did find there's a couple of resources and I'll give a link in the description to DeWitt, uh, Tim, who I stream with on a Friday night talking about droid building and stuff. He has done this modification on a slightly different machine. I think it was the S that he did it on. So I've bought the same steppers as he has and I'm gonna give it a go right now. Let's see what happens. So here's a quick guide through the process while I speed this up just a little bit. So you remove the back plate. Obviously make sure you've unplugged everything. Don't touch anything that you shouldn't be touching. And what we're gonna be doing here is just removing the fan. And I'm just pointing out where the driver pins are. Now these are the new stepper motors. They are TMC 2208s. They are this kind of weird orange color. And this is where you'll need to find out a little bit more information about particular drivers. If you're not that tech savvy, it won't mean a hell of a lot to you, but it just talks about the ampage that you can run through this machine. If you're following this guide though, you shouldn't have to worry too much because the 2208s will work just fine. So you're replacing the A4988 drivers that are already in this particular model. 
And as you can see right now, I'm testing these particular drivers with a uh, multimeter just to check the what I'm getting out of them at the moment. And it's 1.02. What I end up doing is actually tuning them down to 0.85, which is was suggested on a couple of the websites. I would also suggest before you try doing this that you actually research the board. I'll try and put as many links as I can and any GitHubs that I find in the description below just to make sure that your board matches up to the one that I've got in this particular machine as they can be prone to changing them from time to time. And I certainly can't be held responsible or want you to blow your board up. I'm here to try and help you and assist you where I can. So as you can see, the new drivers have been installed. I'm just making doubly sure of everything that needs to be put on and then I use a Stanley knife blade basically to pop the heat sinks on. Uh, there's a little uh, sticky back on that and uh, basically you just drop them on. Just be very careful that you're not going to be touching any of the uh, pins. And the other thing you'll need to do with this is when you put the fan back on you'll need to increase the space so what I've done is I've put a little bolt just between the fan and the uh, little clip that's there and that just allows it to stand off just enough so it's not resonating against anything and you'll see me popping that on right now so this like I say this is a relatively easy upgrade to do and since filming this I have learned as well that you can upgrade the firmware via Cura so I'll also pop the links down in the description for you if you want to try and do that as well. It's something that I haven't attempted yet because actually the printer is working relatively well at the moment and the results that I had from this have been absolutely amazing, which I'll show you a little bit of information on that now. So just to cast your memory back, when the Z dropped on this, on the original drivers, we got to around about 75 dB at the maximum, okay? So there's 75 there. Now with the new stepper drivers, actually I think it was 78 at that point. So with the new drivers, ready for it? So what we do first is we drop the Z down. Oh, look at that. So that's a 15 decibel change there. I'm damn impressed with that. What we'll do very quickly then is we just home everything. Just make sure everything's working. So as you can hear in the background, as this homes on the Z, which was the most noisiest part, it's still at room ambience, which is amazing. So after what seems like forever trying to find a tape measure, I finally got one. So all I'm gonna do here is come around to the front. I'm gonna measure the gantry. To the very top I'd say we're gonna measure the gantry to the very top here and we've got we'll do it in mil so we've got 22.6 on this side and we have 22.6 on that side so we know that the gantry is definitely level to this and next we're gonna then do exactly the same and we've got 20 so we've got uh, 7.2 7.3 and 7.3 so that's pretty good right so we're actually straight and level and ready to go impressed with that so far again you know it's all about silencing this as best we can the bed feels okay uh, and obviously now that noise has kind of dissipated through the stepper motors and also through the frame I'm sort of happier with using it. Not that, you know, the thing is with these things, I guess if you're working in an environment that's kind of noisy anyway, then you're gonna be kind of used to that and kind of happy, and certainly if it's away from you. But being that I've got a recording here and have printers running at the same time, it's not an ideal scenario for me. So I'm hoping that these stepper motors are gonna be better. So we're gonna run out of test print now, see how we get on with that and um, reconvene. Now the prints that I have been getting out of these, and I will just show you one of the first prints that I did was with this particular one so and actually the prints aren't all that bad there's a couple of little kind of movement marks and stuff but in in all honesty i think it's pretty damn good so i'm very very happy and very impressed with how this printer has performed and now i hope that with these stepper drivers installed it's going to carry on doing a better job than perhaps it did before and with a little fine bit of tuning as well a good example of that is removing these crappy little bed springs which uh, is a real pet peeve of mine because they always put these NAF springs on. I don't know why they do it. I don't know if they're trying to save money or if China have got a 
huge amount of these crappy springs, but for whatever reason, they always put them on these different machines. Creality do it, any cubic obviously do it, and uh, you know what, sod it, I'm gonna swap those out right now. And here they are. Bed stability is certainly gonna be your friend in this instance, guys, so replacing these springs with these stronger springs, and I always go for these types of springs, and I've got a couple of printers here that have got blue springs on them, but uh, it's all about the tension. So these yellow ones, they work out to be about six quid on uh, on Amazon. I'll put a link, post a link in the description as well, but they work really, really well. So all we're gonna do, literally lift the bed up. So I thought I'd leave this bit in here and just speed it up, but basically I'm taking some springs out and replacing them. It's the easiest job in the world. So let's move swiftly on now. So let's get this calibration cap off the ground. Here we go. Here is our calibration cat, if we can get some zooming in on this. What do you think of that little fella? Here we go. It looks okay. It's not too bad. There's a few little lines in it still. It's not crisp, but it's also not too bad. Again, you know, with a little bit of finer tuning, I might be able to get that uh, a little bit better. We do have to have this kind of ghosting effect and some artifacts still on there. But to be honest, from a printing point of view, it's it's not too bad. Uh, I'd like to see some of these these finer lines blending a little bit more. I'm seeing on the side here. There's a very very small amount of. Uh, can you see that? Yeah. So I mean, it's it's together. The print is the print is very much together. But there is. It does seem like there are some weird kind of movements and stuff inside of that. So I'm going to carry on tuning this and see what I can get. Out of so in short, if I can remove some of those little weird lines from this particular print, I'd be certainly happier. And uh, I'll carry on messing around with the slicer settings and I will be updating those on my YouTube uh, comment page as well. So make sure you check that out. And uh, let's have a look at what else we were gonna do with this printer. So, as I say, this is what I printed. Well, this is one of the first prints that I did. And as you can see, it has got that kind of, almost what you would call in the motor industry is like a salmon skin. Uh, like it hasn't quite been uh, sanded and finished correctly. It, that's that's kind of what I get from this printer is that um, You're either getting some vibrations or some resonating through uh, What can only be described the wheels I suppose, but everything seems to be tight or as tight as I'd like it to be um, But so I can only put it very much down to the settings on Cura at this point um, but ultimately To be honest the price on this Which I is around about 450 quid the price on this is a little bit expensive for what you get. And I would like to see Trinamic Stepper Drivers installed on this as standard. Um, it's gonna be one of those printers that you're gonna to need to play with. From a review point of view, this is a 300 by 300 by 305 build surface. The motherboard is a Tri-Gorilla uh, 1.2 version. I don't know so much about that board in particular, but I believe it's a 32-bit board. It will run uh, different stepper drivers as we've just installed them here. It makes a huge difference, in my opinion, putting silent stepper drivers into this into this machine. And I hope with a little bit of fine tuning, I can get some really good defined 3D prints out of this longer term. Is it worth the money? I would probably say not. I would actually say if you are able to get this on a reasonably good deal, that's where you're probably gonna win on this one. So a few of the things that I do particularly like on this printer is the build volume and the build plate. The build plate is really nice, it's glass, it's got a uh, membrane inside of it which basically hugs the print while it's hot and then as it releases, it literally just snaps off. 
On the S version of this, which I've also got, you do have rails across each of the axes. On this one, you only have it on the Z. So that's a little bit disappointing because I would like to see, certainly for a bigger printer, I would like to see perhaps those rails on there just to give it that extra bit of stability. I like the fact that the hot end is reasonably easily removable and they give you a secondary V6 hot end as well, which is really nice to see. At the end of the day, it's a big heavy printer, but for the money and for the build volume, you probably could go for an end of three max and get slightly better results longer term in a market that is certainly easier to work with and a community that's certainly easier to work with longer term. So in regards to the Anycubic Mega X, I'm still gonna keep this printer, I'm still gonna work with it, I'm still gonna try and make it better and I'm gonna do certainly more research on it and I may do another update video if I manage to sort of nail this and manage to get really, really good prints out of it. But uh, it's not a printer that I'm going to suggest that you buy at this particular point unless it's on a very, very good deal on Amazon, or if any cubic are doing a really big sale. This printer is probably a £350 printer. I wouldn't expect to pay too much more than that. The fact that it's up for around about four fifty at the moment, that's not what I would want to pay for this particular printer, especially with the drivers being standard drivers. Yet, yeah, for another 25 quid or another £22, you can, of course, upgrade those as we have done today. But longer term, it's a 12 volt PSU, it's got a proprietary uh, setup on this. So something that I'm particularly not fond of is this user interface. It's kind of okay because it's a step above maybe uh, the original uh, Marlin version, but at the same time, it's not that user friendly. There are things all over the place in here that don't make too much sense. I would certainly suggest you, you turn the uh, volume down on this or just remove it altogether. The speaker inside of it is worthless it doesn't give you any extra features and the user interface in my opinion is supposed to be user friendly and assist you with with what you need to know and what you need to do this is not that especially when you look at things like going into your setups how you return your tools as especially this in particular when you go into the axis you're greeted with all sorts of information here which I've never seen anything like this before all right I know it's a touch screen but it just isn't what I'm used to. And again, rather than returning at the top left here, I'm now returning over here. But what I will say, certainly 100%, that upgrade has just been phenomenal. And other than the x-axis, which is making a small amount of noise, that is a room noise at 60 decibels. So I'm really, really happy with that particular upgrade and I will be using this printer more now that it's not so bloody annoying. So there you go, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a little like. If you've got any questions or if you've got any comments or if you want to share some information about this, this particular printer or if you have any suggestions on how to upgrade this or changing out the board or anything like that, I think this has potential to be a really, really cool printer. But out of the box, it prints okay but I think there's some room for improvement. But we will see you next time, so take care of yourself and happy printing. Bye for now.